Now, why is, as a financial planning firm, would we spend some time talking about uh, health issues and gut health in, in the context of finances? And um, you've heard this spiel from me before, but it's very, very true. Um, our overall health, and specifically we're going to talk about gut health, will impact almost every area of our life, um, our energy, our cognition, our relationships, um, our mental health, you know, our emotions, they're all intertwined. And study after study confirms that our ability to marshal good cognition, which is impacted by our health, really does influence our ability to make good financial decisions. And so all of us right now are going through a period of time, um, either low-grade anxiety, lots of anxiety, concern. Some of you are being, you know, very pragmatic about this COVID-19 moment that we're all in. But most of us are just, we're just going through this massive change. Um, for some of us, it's a loss of our routines, and that can be very destabilizing. And so anything that we can do to encourage conversations around overall health, I think, is important because it does impact our finances. Now, if you're participating for the first time and you did not get an email, you came through Facebook Live as an example or other means, and you'd like to get emails directly from our office when we're hosting these webinars, make sure you reach out to us. Uh, you can zip us an email. As well, if you visit our website, HumphreysWealthGroup.com, uh, you can send us an email through our website as well. Um, as well, we're posting regular blogs. And so some of you may not be familiar with our website, HumphreysWealthGroup.com. If you go to the blog posts, uh, we're posting there fairly regularly. And there's some great content that uh, would be complementary to some of the topics that we're going to be talking about. Um, so I think those are the main things that I wanted to cover off uh, before we start uh, the session. And so I am going to um, stop sharing my screen here. I'm just going to talk, I'm going to introduce you to Jody. So let me just do that. Jody and I are going to come up on the screen together. Just one second. Hi, Jody. Hello. I love, I love your, the paintings behind you. That's such <laughs> a tranquil kind of uh, theme there. You got, what's that, a lake? Yeah, it's beautiful, isn't it? You got the dock to nowhere? Yes. Well, just, that's kind of how things are right now, isn't it? Yeah, you're not kidding. You're not kidding. Um, so, Jody, you are, uh, now make sure that I get the terminology right. You are a holistic nutritionist? Yes, a registered holistic nutritionist. Now, if you had to give us kind of a short synopsis or description about um, sort of what your vision is for the work that you do, and then just a kind of a brief summary of your kind of day-to-day, month-to-month life working with people, what would that sound like? What does that look like? Oh, boy, how much time do we have? Because every day is a little bit different. <laughs> so as a holistic nutritionist, so first of all, I'm a registered holistic nutritionist, which means okay. I've gone to school. I am part of a professional organization. I'm certified, registered. The federal government, you know, has their nose in my business, which is important, right? They, they need to know what I'm doing because that makes it safer for anybody who comes to see me. And what makes me a little bit different than other kinds of nutritionists is that holistic word, because I really want to look at the whole part of you, right? I don't want to look at your arm. I don't want to look at your head. I'm interested in how your whole body works, but I'm also interested that in the context of your life. So it's not just about, okay, well, your gut health needs to work in this particular way. It also needs to work within the life you lead. Do you live in Canada? Do you live in the prairies? Do you live in Churchill? Do you live in Toronto? Do you have five kids under five at home? Do you live alone? Do you take care of the aging parents in your, in your home? Or do you have to go out? And, all of those kinds of things go into our health. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of times we forget that. So people think, oh, nutrition, you're all about food. Well, for sure. I'm going to talk lots about food, of course. But in that context of how does food make you feel? How does the rest of your life work? Are you happy with how you feel? If you are, chances are you're not talking to me very much. That's okay. You know, if you want some, some change, okay, what does that look like for us? And how do we look at that whole piece? The other way to look at holistic is looking at not only science, because I also have a master's of science degree, which is very important because we really do need to look at solid research, really understanding the foundation of what we're talking about, the good peer-reviewed science that we've looked at. 
But I think it's also important to look at common sense. Does this really make sense in our lives? Mm -hmm. And we also need to listen to old, ancient, traditional kinds of things that have worked over millennia. And maybe they don't necessarily have the rigorous science behind them, but we still know they work, right? Chicken soup, we know that works for us. So I like to take all of those pieces and put them together for a whole picture for you. Okay. Well, that's that's a good overview. And um, I'm actually going to turn, I'm going to turn everything over to you. So as a co-panelist, you're going to walk us through a a bit of a presentation to be a a framework for a discussion. (laughs) All right. um, Sounds good. And as, and as Jody goes through that, we're going to, you know, probably pause every once in a while as questions come in. So again, I encourage you to use this opportunity to throw questions our way. And then we'll, we'll stop along the way and, and give those questions to Jody to kind of unpack for us. So with uh, no further ado, Jody, you can take over the screen if you want and bring your presentation up. All right, here sounds good. Can you guys see that? It should say feeling fabulous in springtime. Let us know in the chat that you can see that. Now I won't be able to see the chat, I don't think. So as long as we're seeing that, we're good. Okay, so here we are, and um, we want to talk about how we transition from winter into spring, which we all know is a fairly hefty transition for most years, and this year has given us a little bit more to deal with, hasn't it? It's uh, quite the challenging spring that we're dealing with. Pouring rain outside. Yesterday was beautiful. Who knows what tomorrow is going to bring. It's been cold and snowy for April. That's kind of a standard Manitoba, Winnipeg springtime. And then we have this other dimension. So we're just going to talk about the elephant in the room here, which is this whole coronavirus COVID-19 piece that is affecting absolutely every part of our life. And as Sean's already said, it's causing all of us anxiety. Of course it is, we all feel it differently. Some days are better than others. You know, you're seeing this in your family, everybody's having a good day, then one by one, you know, Monday through Friday, oh, there goes one of them down the, I'm mad, I'm frustrated, all that kind of thing, type of pathway. So we need to address this, but I I wanna just really emphasize that all of the things that we're gonna talk about today are not gonna cure COVID-19 if you get it. It's not really going to prevent you from getting it. All of those important things that our healthcare professionals are already telling us, that's what we know about this right now, right? So stay away from people, wash your hands, do all that really good quality stuff. Um, But what we will talk about today is how do you make your body work well? If a body works really well, your body is naturally going to be able to fight off things that come close to it, right? You know that when you're feeling your best, you get fewer colds, you get fewer headaches, you feel less run down. So we're definitely going to talk about how we make our bodies work to their maximum capacity. But this also isn't a time, I don't, I'm not a big fan of major crazy detox stuff anyway, and we'll talk about that a little later on. Um, and while I am a holistic practitioner and usually when you show up to see me, I am going to say, okay, we need to kind of overhaul some stuff in your life. This isn't the year to do that. We have this extra stress on every aspect of our life, our physical life, our spiritual life, our emotional life, our financial life, pick, pick a part of your life. This is affecting it. So this is not the year for us to do something dramatic. There's still plenty of things for us to do because we know that we are coming into this time of year having done what Manitobans always do, which is hibernate as much as possible because it's minus 30 outside and there's crazy snow and it's icy and you don't want to go out. And so you, you want to kind of come inwards and you spend the winter being all nice and warm and cozy and snug and you come out in spring and you, you feel like, okay, this is great. It's spring. I'm going to burst out of my nest. And you expect to be able to show up and have this perfect short and tank top body ready to go. And your hair is gorgeous. And you're, 
you're just ready to launch into this wonderful new season. And so our expectations tend to override our common sense, right? Because our common sense should tell us, well, you can't spend six months cozy on the couch underneath all of your blankets, eating soups and stews and yumminess and burst out into the world with tons of energy and this fabulous, fit, healthy, vibrant body, right? That doesn't make any sense. We also spend winter doing something really, really important, and that is maintaining where we're at. We are spending most of winter trying to just simply stay where we are. We're not necessarily building or cleaning or fixing things. We're trying to just survive, right? That's what we do. It's winter. That's if we can get through it, it's a good year. So we come into spring oftentimes with some compromised nutrient levels. Vitamin D is usually the biggest one. We use up all of our stores over the winter. We don't have a lot left for coming into spring. So our nutrient levels aren't really fabulous. So you think, I want to come out and, and run around and do all this great stuff. And you go for your first run of the season and think, I can hardly get down the block. Well, sure. Okay. That makes sense. And we also often end up in spring with some compromised gut health because we haven't spent time looking after that over the winter. We've tried to just survive winter, which is great, and we have, but we haven't really focused on how is our digestion? Is it working well? Are we putting in all of the building blocks that we need to have really high quality gut health? And so these spring laws are attributed to our bodies not having done a lot of work over the winter. But when we come into spring and we think, oh, spring is dull and I feel kind of gloomy and I should feel happy. <clears throat> and you think, well, what's wrong with me? Everything should be really fun. You know, the, the sun's good. sun is out and the snow's gone away. But because we have that compromised gut health, we also have ended up with some compromised mental health. Mental health starts in the gut, and a lot of us don't realize that. Everything about true, quality, solid, stable, consistent mental health is all about gut health. All the stuff going on in your brain, your happiness, your anxiety, your depression, your joy, your ability to deal with life, your resiliency, all of that does not start in your brain, it starts in your gut. Because all of the neurotransmitters that you need for all that good stuff happening all up here in your, in your mental capacities is actually all produced in your gut. Serotonin, GABA, dopamine, all of it. So if you don't have good gut health, this is why we show up to our lives thinking, what's going on with my brain? I can't remember stuff. I can't handle things. What's, what's going on? Oh, it's our gut health. And why does this occur? Well, this is how we spent winter. We spent winter having heavy meals. We want warm, cozy, soupy, stew, thick sauces, yummy, warm, comforting kinds of stuff. We go to Christmas parties and Hanukkah parties and New Year's parties, pick a party, right? We've got to do something in the winter. So we're going to each other's houses. Oh, what are we doing? Well, you're not going and having a salad, let me tell you. And in between, when you're at home or you're trying to travel to work or to you get back from being at work and you're cold and miserable, what are you having? A nice, cozy, warm, heavy meal. So we have all of this comfort food all of the time. Okay. Yep, that's a regular year. And now we've got this year. Now we've got the 2020 and we've got the COVID-15. So we have now spent quarantine for the last month doing all the same thing because we are seeking comfort. We are stressed. We are concerned. We don't know what's going on. We are constantly near our fridge, right? And often for most of us, you get up, you have breakfast, maybe you grab a cup of coffee, maybe you grab a smoothie. You know, if you've come to see me, you're eating a good, healthy breakfast with some protein and some fat in there, but whatever, you're doing what you need to do. Off you go to work with your lunch. You spend all day at work. You eat your lunch. You spend the rest of the day there, and then you come home. But right now, you're doing all of those jobs, but you are within walking distance of your fridge. So we're doing constant eating. We're doing stress eating. We're doing anxiety eating. 
And we are all doing a whole lot of weird eating because depending on what you bought when you are doing the stress shopping, you've got a whole bunch of strange things in your house. So what are we going to do? We want to jump into spring and do some brand new kinds of things. And that's what I want to talk to you about for the rest of our time together is what do we do about this? So before we get into what are we going to do about this? How, how's our chat going? We have anything coming in so far, Sean or Janelle? So I'm, try, I'm trying to encourage people to provide some feedback. I just sent out a message to everyone. Um, do you have any strategies for getting out of the winter blues um, and engaging in spring? Okay, so one of, the, one of the participants said, and this is a great one, walk every day. We planted our garden yesterday and made a greenhouse. So that's, that's awesome. I know that, yeah. uh, I know my wife Tanya is busily writing down things that she wants to get from the, uh, uh, the greenhouses for planting. I know that that is a huge thing that sort of is giving her a bit of a lift emotionally is just planning out her garden, planning out where she's going to, you know, put things. We're, we started the you know, last week, you know, cleaning out the sh you know, shed and moving stuff around, but share with us um, out there, what are you doing? What are some things or strategies that you have for, um, you know, just, encouraging uh, the engagement in spring and in improving your mood and just things that you look forward to. So be sure to, to share those things with us. Okay, here, living in, this is amazing. So living in Gaffney, South Carolina, where it's 65 Fahrenheit today, working on my flower beds has pulled me out of the winter brain fog. And I can tell you, um, doing this webinar, Jody, you can probably agree with this, living in, in, in uh, Winnipeg, people think they have a bad in Minneapolis. So you just go up to Winnipeg <laughs> and uh, we have brutal winters. So that's awesome. So you're, you're busy yeah. getting outside. Uh, I'm baking a lot. I realized how easy, easy it is to, uh, uh, from a, because of the time factor, whoops, it tastes really good too need to be more careful. So the baking thing, been walking every day with my girls, doing more yoga. I've actually lost some weight. Uh, here's another one. This is great. I'm uh, giving people cinnamon buns, just like the bakery. They love them. That's awesome. I, I think one of the things in your initial comments, am I correct in saying that we need to be a little bit easy on ourselves, a little bit gentle, and uh, this idea of just plunging into spring activities Maybe some of us can do it, but it needs to be a bit more of a graduated approach and a realistic approach. Yes, absolutely. And that's what we're going to talk about next. Okay, so let's get into the next piece, Jody. And again, uh, as you give your feedback or questions, uh, keep doing it. It just makes it a little more interactive. And I know Jody would love to address um, some of your questions. You, and again, if, if you want to just direct them just to the panelists, you can do that. So you know in the chat function, if you click to, and it can be either to uh, all panelists and attendees or just to the panelists. If you want a little more confidentiality, feel free to do that. And then I'll direct that question to Jody. Okay, take it away, Jody. For sure. So I, I do like the interaction. So I, I really want to hear from all of you. And this is a great transition, right? Of So we're all feeling that blah. And I think everybody who is in Canada or certainly the the prairies in Manitoba today hearing that about the South Carolina gardens we're all feeling a little bit oh when is that going to happen for us <laughs> please please when's it our turn um, because we're still in that volatile April cycle of you know beautiful yesterday my kids were out in shorts and t-shirts and today it's raining which is fine tomorrow who knows it'll snow I don't know you know we, we've still got some time so it really is that feeling of how how do we get out of that blah feeling? Because as much as spring looks beautiful in movies, it's really ugly right now, right? All of the sand and the, the grass is all moldy and the trees are kind of limp. We had a terrible storm in, in October. So I don't know about you guys, but I'm still cleaning up from that. All of my trees are broken. So now I can finally get to them. 
And so we, we have this idea that we can burst forth like the robins or the geese come back and it's all exciting. And then you get out there and it, it doesn't feel the same way. So how do we change that? But I want us to still stay very cognizant throughout this whole uh, presentation and this year particularly, because I would probably say a few different things to you if this was a different kind of year where we weren't all dealing with this huge overarching fear for our health and our safety. I love working with the innate cycles of nature. So traditional Chinese medicine speaks really highly to me because they, they work with the body with seasons, they work with your organs that correlate with different seasons. And one of the beautiful things about the body is it's really, really smart. And we've often worked really hard to forget that. So when spring shows up, this is actually a time when our bodies naturally start wanting to do a lot of cleansing for us which is great because our brains, our thoughts, our desires match that. We want to clean out the house. We, wanna, we don't ever want to see a sweater ever, ever again. You know, you want to put your shorts on, whether it makes sense or not. You're just tired of all that winter stuff. And spring is a time when your body also starts thinking that for you as well. And you start ramping up these natural cycles. So in the springtime, your liver, which is one of your body's biggest cleansing organs, it does crazy, crazy work for you. It filters all of your blood, it filters all of your nutrients, tells all the different pieces where to go in your body, deals with all of your hormones, filters all of your toxins, flushes a whole bunch of stuff from your body, makes cholesterol for you, which is really critical to your brain health and your body's health. You need to do it. Your body makes way more cholesterol than you could ever possibly eat, so don't even worry about that. And your liver kind of goes into a little bit of that hibernation in the winter too, which is why sometimes in the winter you might feel like, I haven't changed anything, and why don't my pants fit? And you get a little bit of that muffin top, spare tire kind of feeling, and you're feeling really frustrated with yourself. It's fine, because over the next six to eight weeks, even if you still don't change anything, suddenly you think, oh, I'm starting to feel a little bit better because your liver wakes up and starts getting rid of all of that winter junk and it starts changing with this season. So it starts showing up as a natural helper to your desire to already do this. So what I want to do is tell you a few things over the next few slides of how do we support our body's innate intelligence. Our bodies are really smart. And what I want us to do is to work with them, right? Let's go with the tide. We're not going to fight it. Let's do this in a way that our body already understands. And then it's going to be easier for us because if anybody's ever tried to do a diet or a cleanse or a boot camp or a, a, a challenge or anything, and you've kind of forced your body to do it, you feel like you're going upstream. So what I would like to do is give you some techniques and some ideas around the kinds of things we can do to support what our body already wants to do, but what our brains also want to do too. I know you want to feel fabulous. I, will, I know you want to look fabulous. I also know that you don't really want to give up too much stuff because who wants to do that? This is also not the year to do anything harsh or anything dramatic. This is the year to recognize that there is nothing normal about what we are going through. None of us have ever experienced anything like this before. And I want the overarching thing for you to take away from this today is that we really need to be kind to ourselves. Okay, so let's jump in. All right, let's start in the morning. How are we going to elevate our mornings? I'm going to tell you three different things. We're going to elevate three different things in our life today. The first one is everybody loves their coffee. And I'm a holistic nutritionist. 
coffee's not the best thing for you. <laughs> As John shows me, it's coffee. What? What do you mean it's not good for you? And this is tea. No, it's not coffee. But I know we all love it. And I got, I'm here to tell you, full disclaimer, I love coffee too. I don't drink very much of it because my my love of it and my body's reaction to it are kind of mutually exclusive. So I don't drink it very often at all, maybe once or twice a year. So before you get worried, before you get worried and blow up the chat of, okay, I don't want to listen to any more if you're taking my coffee away. I'm not taking your coffee away. We're going to elevate your coffee. Okay. So one of the things that I like to do, especially with people who are starting off, kind of putting a toe in the water of, okay, I'm not loving how I'm feeling. I'm not loving what's happening with my physical health, my mental health, my emotional health. I'm not ready for really jumping in whole hog, but maybe I want to put a toe in the water of what are a couple of things that I can change to see if any of this works, right? Like maybe you don't really believe me that I know what I'm talking about. That's okay. That's totally cool. Maybe let's try one or two things and then you can see, oh, small change is going to make a big difference. So we're not doing anything dramatic. Nobody's going off their coffee. If you're already off coffee, don't go back on it, okay? <laughs> so. This is the thing that we're going to do. We are going to give you some coffee with a kick and we will definitely post the recipes of all the stuff that I'm going to tell you later on today so that you can try this kind of stuff for yourself. So the trouble with coffee is it tempers, it, it actually interferes with our adrenal function. So our adrenals are a little gland in, the, in between our kidneys and our adrenals show up every day and say, this is how our energy is gonna go. They kind of give you your energy, they do a whole bunch of stuff for your hormones. We really want our adrenals to show up, right? They, they kind of stabilize our energy throughout the day. But they are lazy, and they don't really like to wake up before 10 o'clock in the morning. And if we have our coffee as soon as we wake up at 6.45, and who, who doesn't, why, why would we drink coffee if we're not drinking it to wake ourselves up in the morning? But when we do that, we actually smush our adrenal reaction. And so our adrenals then go, oh, well, you seem to be doing okay. I don't need to show up. And so your adrenals then get lazier and lazier and you start having energy issues throughout the day. So we are gonna elevate your morning by doing a couple of things with your coffee. Ideally, you're gonna get some organic shade grown ethically sourced coffee i recognize that that's going to be somewhat challenging right now with your ability to go to the store so use whatever you've got it's totally fine do what you need to do i totally get that when you do your next click and collect just pick a better coffee to put in your cart you're also going to put it in a french press if you have one don't go buy one it's not that big of a deal but we want to look at a French press. It's that, that one that comes with the glass container. It's got the plunger on top. Instead of doing a drip coffee, because this is where we get a lot of that controversy about coffee's good, coffee's bad. I like coffee, coffee's terrible. What we wanna do is if we use a French press, we maintain all the oils that are in the coffee and the oils that are in the coffee are good antioxidants. They protect our cells from all the yuck in the world and help us fight back against all the things that destroy our cellular integrity. If you don't have one, don't worry about it. It's not a big deal. Just do what you can. Then we're going to put in some amazing stuff. Now bear with me. It sounds disgusting until we're done. We're going to put in some coconut oil. We're going to put in some butter. We're going to put in 100% maple syrup, not Aunt Jemima. She's fakey. We want to put in 100%. And we want to blend that all together and make this an amazing, rich, frothy thing. We're going to put in some cinnamon if you have it because that stabilizes our blood sugar. We're going to put this all in a blender. It is going to turn into the most amazing, fancy Starbucks-like drink that you've been missing. And it's going to do a whole bunch of, of amazing stuff for you. Sean, you're on mute. I just, I'm not very coordinated, so it takes me a while <laughs> to find my unmute button. Just a quick question, if you're okay, Jody, I'm breaking your flow, but uh, there was a great question here. Um, how do we know if the coffee is shade grown? Is there a mark on the package? Yes, it will say shade grown. 
on it. It will say organic on it. Um, ethically sourced is a little bit trickier to find based on the packaging. It's more the brand that would tell you a little bit more about that. So you can Google stuff. But really, right now, if you've got lots of great coffee in your house, excellent. If you have Folgers in your house and you're thinking, what do I do next? The next time, and don't throw out your Folgers, right? I'm not into wasting stuff. If you've got stuff, use it. I'm, I don't want to send you out into the world and, and add to your risk that way. Um, but the next time that you're ordering coffee or you wander into a store, pick something that's organic. There's lots of choices in Superstore, Safeway, Sobeys. They've all got an organic coffee. Try that, right? So that's that elevation. Take one baby step. This doesn't need to be a big dramatic thing. Oh my goodness, I'm drinking all this terrible coffee. No, no, no. Don't worry about any of that. We're going to be kind and we're going to then step one step forward. So... Um, just a, another quick question. Um, is that the same for fair trade? I think you kind of talked about this a little more hit and miss, right? Fair trade is that ethically sourced. So if you see something that fair trade that says fair trade, chances are that's that's that ethical piece of people are getting good wages, they're treating the land well, you're you're you know all that kind of the farmers are getting paid that kind of thing. Yeah. Does shade grown apply to tea? I don't know. Okay. I don't think so because okay, it would have no. I don't think you can grow tea in the shade. It's it's the leaves we're looking for, right? Okay, and uh, we have an espresso machine. Are those okay? Yes, because it doesn't have a paper filter. Okay, perfect. So yeah. actually, when I heard your last presentation, I always use a paper filter and a drip, and I've yeah. gone to the uh, French press because of what you talked about in terms of the the healthy yeah. uh, aspect of that, and um, my my 22 year old son gave me a, a course on how to actually use a French press. So I was very, very <laughs> blunt to my approach, push it down. And he said, yeah. it's a whole scooping thing and a settling thing and five minutes to sit and a yeah. very gentle way of pouring the coffee. So it's a, uh, it's, it's a specialty in and of itself. It is. And, and that can then become your new ritual, right? You can, you can create almost a meditative experience around creating your coffee. And if that freaks you out of, oh my goodness, I have to wait to pour my <laughs> coffee now. No, that's not what we're saying. Do whatever you need to do, right? We're still kind of looking at, we need that overarching, be kind, we're in survival mode kind of thing. But if you have the opportunity to add one of these tips in, it elevates your experience. And that's what we're looking for. Perfect. One last question, and then you can continue. Yeah. Um, K cups are they a no? Well, they're certainly not ethical, really, for the world, are they? Because of the, <laughs> you know, there is that yeah. situation. Um, they aren't. You're also then pouring boiling hot water through plastic, um, which isn't Ooh. isn't going to be great for your end product. What you can do if that's all you have in your house, and you're now thinking, oh yeah right? I need to kind of rethink this, but this is what I have. Open up your cup, dump it into, into a container, pour your hot water on it, and then put it through a tea strainer. Right? Wow. So there's okay. ways around. You can, you can still elevate what you have in your house. And then, you know, going forward, think about how you want to approach that. And whatever you choose, I just want you to do it mindfully right? To be aware of what it is that you're doing and how you're getting these kinds of things in your body, because all those tiny little pieces add up. It's death by a thousand paper cuts. If we don't realize what we're doing. I think that that point's bang on. I've heard you say that before. It's, it's not so much do's or don'ts. It's more just an awareness and then you make a conscious decision. Right? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, perfect. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so we've blended up our coffee or our Folgers or whatever it is that we have in our life. And we've put in some coconut oil and some butter. If you don't have coconut oil, just add more butter. It doesn't matter what kind of butter you have. Yes, you can buy really good butter. Don't worry about that kind of thing right now. We're just wanting to make your coffee a little bit better for you. We can also add something called collagen, which is one of my absolute favorite food-based supplements. It's a protein supplement. You want collagen, not gelatin, because if you put gelatin in your coffee, it's going to turn into jello as it cools off, and you will not be very pleased with me. 
but collagen dissolves in cold and hot things and it adds a little bit of protein so you can add a little bit of that in. and now suddenly you're looking at your cup which is all frothy and beautiful and has and tastes amazing but you have all this wonderful stuff in it so why does this work for us why does this elevate our morning I want you to start your day with some really good mood stabilizing fats in you. So you wake up and you put in coffee. And if you're, if you're doctoring up your coffee with milk and sugar, you're putting in sugar and sugar, right? Because you're putting milk in there and milk is a high sugar source. It's a high carbohydrate source. And so you're, you've got the caffeine and now you've got a whole bunch of sugar and all you're doing is you're spiking your blood sugar, right? And that's, that's why we love it because it's giving us that energy boost. But then we crash. Nah, we're not really loving that. You then spend the rest of your day trying to stabilize your blood sugar and catch up to stabilizing your mood, right? So by middle of the afternoon, you are ripping the heads off everybody who's near you. And right now, those people are your children because they're at home with you homeschooling and they've now asked you a question about grade 11 science. So we want you to be a lot more stable by the time that question rolls around on your desk and fats will stabilize you. So they start your day giving you very stabilized mood. If you put a little bit of that collagen in there, you've got some protein. So you're also, that's helping to stabilize your usage of your energy. That fat also helps you absorb and use any of your fat soluble vitamins. So back when we started and said we're coming out of that winter hibernation and our nutrient stores aren't very good, and the number one that tends to be the lowest for all of us is vitamin D, well, vitamin D is fat soluble. So we need that fat in your body and we need those saturated fats. We need coconut oil, we need bacon, we need butter, we need all that kind of stuff to get into our bodies to help us use those fat soluble vitamins, which are also immune vitamins think what you will about that statement and it also helps us use all of our minerals and a lot of our minerals are essential to our immune function so we want to have really good immune function we want to have really good mineral levels but you can take all the mineral supplements in the world that you want if you don't have enough fats you're not going to be able to absorb that into your body and get that into your cellular function or be able to use them when you need them. So we need that fat. And suddenly now you've got this fancy coffee and it's good for you. You're now doing something really good and important for your body. So now that also is going to satiate you in the morning. So now you don't have that coffee jitter. You've got the alertness, but now you're very stable. You are thinking better. It improves your brain function. You're going to make better choices now about the other foods you eat during the day the other conversations you can have, the work that you need to do, the now all the school work that you're doing with the people in your homes. It also does lots of other stuff. It's going to lubricate your joints, so you're going to feel better just during this kind of not moving very much weird home life. Um, it smooths out your arteries. So if you have cardiovascular concerns in your family or yourself, and you're thinking, okay, what's going on with these fats and my um, cardiovascular system? These kinds of fats that we're putting in this coffee actually help smooth down your arteries. So you're going to be using less cholesterol, which is your body's band-aid, and then we get mad at that. It's going to improve your hair, skin, and nails. And who doesn't want to have that happen, right? Because that is also going to improve how we're feeling about ourselves. All of this, you guys, all of this in a cup of coffee. Amazing. Quick question. <clears throat> I have uh, a lot of coffee every day. So if, is one bulletproof good? Does that mean six or seven bulletproofs are good today? <laughs> okay, Sean, we need to talk. Six or seven <laughs> cups of coffee. I don't think anybody is going to suggest that's a good idea. So I don't, think I, I don't think I have <laughs> adrenal glands. I just have <laughs> coffee circulating in my blood system. Yes, um, yes. Here's a great question uh, from the previous page, which is, I don't know yeah. the answer to it. Is collagen plant-based or animal-based? Collagen is animal-based. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. So if you're vegan, is yeah. there an alternative? Um, you, can, you can get a plant protein for sure. I wouldn't put it in your coffee because it's going to taste like plants. 
Okay. So collagen doesn't taste like anything. So you can stick it in places where you wouldn't normally put a protein powder because it has no flavor. So you can put it in a glass of water and you wouldn't be able to tell it's there. Um, so for the, the vegetarians and the vegans, um, this you wouldn't probably put protein in your coffee. That's fine. Put it elsewhere. One of my favorite proteins for the vegan crowd is hemp because it also comes with those really wonderful omega-3 fatty acids. And you really want to avoid ever having a fat-free protein because in order to use proteins well in your body, you need to have the fats with them. So I like the, the nature approved ones, right? Mother nature knows what she's doing. So, you know, if you're going to then take just a protein, where are the proteins where she's already added fats in there and hemp is beautiful. Okay, perfect. There is a, a question on the kind of the recipe, the sweetening, but like you said, we're gonna get hold yeah, of we'll, your recipe. Yes, absolutely, we'll get that for you. Yeah, okay, and we'll you. post it on Facebook too for those of you who are on there, yeah. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. All right, so we have elevated our mornings and we're off to the races, we're ready to go. And now we are gonna elevate our gut health because you are all waiting for, okay, well, gut health is all fine and good, but I really want that whole mental health thing because that sounded cool. So one of the things to consider, and I, and I, I issue this to you as an invitation because it is a really big thing to consider at any time in your life. And it's an especially big thing to consider when we are not in our normal lives and we can't create normalcy for ourselves right now. So I issue this as a very gentle invitation as consideration to limit what I call the flaming five, gluten, dairy, sugar, corn, and soy. These five foods are the most inflammatory things that you can put into your body. Now, anybody who's paying attention is now thinking, well, you're contradicting yourself because in the previous slide, you said we could have butter. There's exceptions to every rule, and this is also one of them. Butter is the exception to the inflammatory dairy. And when I say sugar, I mean refined white and brown sugar. So if you are using 100% maple syrup, that is a sweetener, not a sugar, just so that you don't have to ask me that question. These five foods create a lot of havoc in the body, whether you have allergies, intolerances, celiac, whatever, it, it doesn't matter. All of these are going to create problems for the average person. So if you are feeling like, yeah, I definitely have some digestive issues, my gut doesn't feel good, I'm bloated, I'm constipated, I'm not constipated, I've got headaches all the time, which is a gut issue, I can't think, I've got brain fog, I walk into the kitchen, not sure why I'm there, I found my keys in a really weird spot, all of these strange kind of like, I don't know, we kind of got this laundry list going on, you want to look at your gut. And when we're looking at our gut, we want to take down that inflammation. So the, this is a place to look. And I want you to do this very gently and be very kind to yourself right now. Other ways to ramp up your gut health is to make sure that you are well hydrated. And that is not with coffee. You can have your coffee and you're also then going to drink a lot of water and you're going to put in a lot of juicy things into your life because we get a lot of fluids from fruit. Fruit's great, I love fruit, go for it. Don't get all fussy on, well, it raises your blood sugar and should we do all this food combining? This is not the time for that. That's a whole different presentation. Eat the fruit, frozen, fresh, I don't care. You wanna up your produce. This is something that you run out of frequently right now because you know you can't buy enough lettuce to last between your two weeks of grocery shopping, right? So that's fine, eat it all up, eat the frozen stuff, whatever. If you've dehydrated some things, great. But we wanna have as much fresh stuff as you possibly can and we wanna ramp up that hydration because think of it this way. If you jump into a swimming pool that's filled with molasses and you try to get to the other end, how's that gonna go for you? It's a little tricky, right? You're stuck, you're kind of, things aren't moving, it's really difficult. Well, think if your bloodstream is sticky, right? If your cells are sticky, 
And we are wanting to get all of those great nutrients that you've put in in your coffee to all the great places in your body. We can't do that if things don't float. So we need things to be hydrated. The other thing that happens with hydration, it flushes your body out. And if we're flushing our body out, you're flushing your liver out, you're flushing your kidneys out, two major elimination organs, we are going to get all of that winter guck out of your body. So really easy thing to do, drink a lot of water. Now I know you're going to ask me, how much water should I drink in a day? It's not as easy as saying, well, you should drink eight glasses. You should, right? It's hard to kind of figure out what works for you. So this is my recommendation on where to start, where to start. Take your weight in pounds and drink half your weight in ounces. So if you're 100 pounds, you're going to drink 50 ounces of water in a day. Or, you know, you can throw some sparkling water in there, throw some juice in there. If you're drinking a smoothie, count that. If you had some soup, count that. And do that as kind of a guideline. This isn't a hard and fast rule, so don't get to 8 o'clock at night and think, I didn't drink it all, and drink it all right then. You're going to be up all night. That's no good. We also don't want to stress our kidneys. So if you think, I can't drink that much, I feel like I'm sloshing the ship, no problem. But do it as a guideline, right? Try, you know, one of these as water in a day if you're not a water drinker. Anything that you add, that you elevate, that's different than what you're doing now, step in the right direction, right? And when we nurture our gut fun function, we nurture our mental health. And one of the best ways to do that is with something called fermented foods or probiotic based foods, because probiotics are going to help get all those good gut bacteria into our bodies and help our guts and our digestion and all those other elements that are going on. Actually take that good food that you've taken the time to consume and get it to where it's supposed to go and actually digest it so you can absorb it because you aren't what you eat. You are what you absorb. So if you're eating all this really great stuff and your body doesn't have the ability to absorb it, you're not getting the benefit. So we need to make sure that you've got good gut health. And the way you're going to do that here is you're going to add in some really great fermented foods and probiotics because this helps everything. So when we elevate our gut health, it works because of course, when we reduce inflammation, everything feels better. Think of the last time you had a headache and your head was pounding and your brain felt like it was inflamed and your eyes were puffy and you hated the light. And as soon as your headache went away, you felt better, right? So anytime we take inflammation down, it helps everything. When you take out those flaming five, which also tend to be the ones that are in all of those kind of junky foods, things that we know that taste really good and comfort us, but we already know aren't really fabulous for our health and we might want to rethink whether that's a good decision. We make space for that salad and we make space for that liter of water and we make space for that good soup and that, you know, delicious barbecue dinner that we've made. So when we take out the junk, we naturally then have better space for what we can take in. And I like to look at it as, this is what I'm going to add into my life. Instead of making myself feel like I'm depriving myself of, oh, I can't have a hamburger. Because then you turn into a tantrum two-year-old, right? Whenever you're told you can't have something, you then have a tantrum and you just want more of it. Because somebody's now told you you can't have it. So uh, instead you think, I'm going to have a salad with this beautiful 12 ounces of sparkling water that I put a splash of juice in. Don't fuss about the juice. Just put it in if it gets the water into you. And this is great. Oh, look, I'm going to add some fermented foods, which is another thing that you can add to your click and collect the next time you go. You can add in some kombucha, add in some raw pickles not Bix pickles. Those are heat treated, they're pasteurized, and they have vinegar. A raw pickle, a fermented pickle is raw. It has the vitamins intact because there's no heat treatment. So all the vitamin C is in there, all the enzymes in the, are in there, and if you don't have enzymes in your life, you die flat out. 
your, so your body makes lots. Don't worry that if you haven't had any fermented pickles, like how are you still alive? Your body makes lots, but it's stressful on the body to have to do this. So if we give the body all these building blocks, we are going to be able to have all these great enzymes floating around in our bodies. It helps us improve our digestion, but it also does something extra cool. And this is why it elevates things. You can do these tiny baby steps and get this huge elevation. Not only does it help digestion because you've added in something that helps you digest food, it increases the digestibility of the food you've already eaten. So suddenly, the hamburger that you did eat, because of course, it's barbecue season, who wouldn't do that, is now more easily digested into a gut that has better digestion simply because you've added in some kombucha, which is a fermented tea, great alternative for pop, also kills sugar cravings, it's outstanding, and it helps you absorb all of these amazing nutrients. So this is the next fantastic thing for us to elevate our life. And when you do that, your brain explodes and thinks, this is amazing. And Sean, this is what you need in the afternoon because kombucha has a whole bunch of B vitamins and B vitamins are energy vitamins, gives you that energy boost in the afternoon without needing to go for that coffee or that chocolate bar. So I'm going to give you a couple of questions or three questions. You can just choose to defer and, and answer them later on or do some of them now. Um, yeah. Kombucha is in our house everywhere. And uh, Tanya is good at, giving me the kombucha throughout the, throughout the week. Here's, here's a few questions. Um, this goes back to the sweeteners that you talked about. Um, and again, you can make a note and come back to it if you want, but uh, what about honey? Because that's one question. Um, is there an alternative to bulletproof coffee? Is there kind of an alternative using tea? Could you, can you oh, do the same thing with tea? Yes. Okay. And um, the third <clears throat> question is fermented foods create a lot of gas what do we take? Is there something with it to calm that down? Okay, <clears throat> so let's start with the sweeteners because then that leads into the tea. So you can, uh, so sweeteners, I like whole na natural sweeteners. Now natural is one of those dumb words that doesn't really mean anything. Um, but I, what I mean is nature invented it. So 100% maple syrup is one of my favorites because First of all, it's delicious. It makes things nice and sweet and yummy. And we all love sweet things. And we should not be ashamed of that. Zero guilt. Throw all of that out. Just enjoy it. We're going to elevate our, our, our deliciousness. I love maple syrup because when it comes from a tree, you get a whole bunch of those enzymes. So you get a whole bunch of enzymes in it. So this is now giving us that elevation alongside the deliciousness. So this is something it's adding to the body. It also is going to give us some minerals, which is outstanding. So now suddenly maple syrup on a spoon is, oh, this is really good for me. So, you know, I'm sorry if any of your children are listening to, to the, this presentation right now. They're all going to say, I need maple syrup on a spoon. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry about it. Put some coconut in oil in there. You're good. Honey is equally as wonderful. However, you need to be careful with honey because it is unfortunately one of those foods that is easily adulterated and we can add corn syrup to it and nobody will, can be able to tell. Um, we pasteurize it and so we kill anything living in it. So then you just end up with a refined sweetener that is horrible. So when it comes to honey, I want you to do a little bit of detective work. We are very fortunate in Manitoba to be surrounded by many, many wonderful bee farmers. Um, it's very easy to find unpasteurized honey. And if you talk to a bee farmer, they will be able to tell you that it's their honey is considered raw. So raw honey is what you're looking for. Um, and unpasteurized, basically it's just poured off of the hives, off of the, the um, good bee homes into our jars. And again, lots of enzyme integrity in there. Fantastic for us. So one thing to just keep in mind for honey, when you want to then put it into your bulletproof coffee or your bulletproof tea, 
You don't want to put it into a boiling cup. So if you've used boiling hot water in your teacup, you want to kind of give it a minute or two, let your tea steep, take your tea bag out, stir it a little bit, release a little bit of that heat before you put the honey in because uh, when your honey is, or when your tea is a little bit cooler, you're going to be able to keep the integrity of that honey intact a little bit longer. So you can absolutely take whatever tea you want and bulletproof it. For sure, same idea, make your tea, however you wanna make it, whatever kind of tea you want. Earl Grey is really nice because it's got that really rich, deep, earthy flavor. Throw your honey in there, your maple syrup, your cinnamon, your, your um, fats, froth it all up and away you go. Yeah, absolutely. So I'll, I'll give you three more. Wait, I have, I've, could... I've got one more to do. Okay, perfect. The, um, the digestibility of the fermented stuff and causing right. gas. Yeah. So a lot of times what happens, if you're eating fermented foods and you're getting really gassy, uh, you're going too fast and you're eating too much. And what's happened is you probably had some gut issues before and maybe your gut's not at its best and you're trying to fix that, which is fantastic. So you're paying attention to your gut and you're wanting to give it a little bit of love. And you know that this is a great way of doing it. So you put these foods in and you suddenly now think, well, I'm bloated, I'm uncomfortable, I have indigestion, maybe some heartburn, I'm gassy. This is unpleasant. This, how is this possibly fixing me? Sometimes what's happened is you've eaten too much too fast and these probiotics don't fool around. Right, they get in there and it's like you've dropped in the most elite army that we have and they have gone to work and they are getting rid of all of the junk, but they're doing it too quickly. And so it's kind of like you've decided to spring clean every single cupboard in your house at once and now you can't walk through your house, it's a disaster. So we just wanna scale that back and do a little bit at a time. <clears throat> I would also suggest that you switch to a little bit of kombucha. And so I will tell you what a little bit means. Start with maybe a quarter of a cup a day. And I want you to take it with lunch. So lunch is when the, your digestion is at its highest. And the way you will remember that is that's when the sun is at its peak. That's when the heat of the world is at its peak. And so the heat of your digestion is also at its peak. So if you're trying to figure out, well, when do I change things up? Lunchtime is the time to do it because then you also have the whole afternoon for your body to process that. You're also then usually at your most active. So you're not eating something and then sitting for three hours after dinner kind of idea. Put a quarter of a cup of kombucha into your into lunch, like have it as your kind of side with whatever you're eating. Do that for three or four days, maybe go to half a cup, kind of go up from there and see if that relieves things. If you wanna go with some of the foods, I would go with a cucumber because they tend to be, cucumbers are easy to digest anyway. I would go with carrots and then I would try beets and I would leave anything that had cabbage or garlic till after you've kind of gotten used to these other kinds of things. You could also try taking a teaspoon of the liquid and not even eating the food and seeing if doing this a little bit more gently would help you. If you are already the person who says, yeah, I've been working on my gut health, that's not the problem. I've been eating these for a while. It's not a matter of me not being used to it. They just make me gassy. There's a couple things you could do. You could add in a shot of uh, about a teaspoon of apple cider vinegar, raw apple cider vinegar in a teaspoon of water. Take it as a shot. That helps digestion. It's also a good de-bloater, kind of just takes that bloat right out, the pain out for sure. You could also try kind of a, just a general off the shelf, full, um, spectrum digestive enzyme. And when I say full spectrum digestive enzyme, I'm looking for something that has some ox bile in it and some HCL plus all the plant enzymes. So this isn't something for the vegans or vegetarians. So if you're having issues with digestion, 
you probably are going to want to look at what type of foods are going in there that are causing some of that gas and, and how you're going to kind of deal with some of that fermenting in your gut level. The apple cider vinegar sometimes helps with that. But for the, the omnivores of the crowd, you know, if you think, oh, okay, I've tried some of these things, it's still not really working out, then off the shelf kind of digestive enzyme can probably give you a little bit of relief. Perfect. Right. One other question um, that came up was, uh, it actually came up a couple of times, Jody, was uh, uh, stevia. What's your opinion on stevia? Right. So there's always the exception to what I like about what Mother Nature's done. Mother Nature has made this beautiful plant it's called stevia, really, really sweet. I don't love it as a sweetener replacement for humans, the general human. So all of us who are just thinking, yeah, I want to make a few changes. I want to kind of, you know, ramp things up. How do I elevate? How do I take that one next step to kind of baby step myself towards a path of feeling a little bit better? Stevia is not a great choice because it doesn't add any calories. And I know that might sound confusing because you think, well, we want sweeteners that we don't want to add more calories. So one of the things that you haven't heard me say up until this moment is anything about calories or calorie counting or portion control or anything. I don't care about any of that. When you eat good foods that your body's recognize and that your, your body is responding to, you will stop eating when you're full because your body will then turn off your need to do that. So with stevia, unfortunately what happens is it's, it acts, your body will often react to it the same way it reacts to aspartame because you put it in and your tongue will think that you put in something sweet, right? Which you have. And all of your cells will react and think, okay, cool. We're getting energy. Sweet equals energy to your cells. And so they get ready. We're ready. We want this energy. We're here. We're here to receive it. And then nothing happens. And so then your body gets confused and thinks something's gone wrong. There's a mistake. We don't know what's happened. We thought we were going to get this and we didn't. Therefore, we must protect all of our energy and we're not going to release any of it and stevia and aspartame can actually contribute to you holding on to weight that you don't want to hold on to because your cells start thinking we are in a famine i'm not going to let anything go so i don't love it for the general population there are two exceptions. If you have small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, SIBO, and if you think you have that, you need to work with a practitioner. This is something that you need to, you need professional help with. And I would refer you on to a really awesome naturopath that I know who does this really well because it's a very fussy problem to deal with. And that stevia actually helps correct it. The other time that it is sometimes okay to use stevia is if you are doing a correct version of keto, which is also something you need to work with a practitioner with because it's very hard to do well and something that I don't often promote um, because it's, it's very, you need to do it in a very particular obsessive kind of way. And I don't like people being obsessive about their food. That's hard to maintain. <laughs> um, one, one other question, and it may not be appropriate, maybe you need to move on, but um, the question was, uh, I put salad dressings on my salads. What's your approach to seasoning or salad dressings when it comes to that kind of thing? This is a great, great question. Thank you for um, asking this question because I get a lot of people who think, okay, I'm cleaning up my diet. I want to eat better. I want to clean up my health. I'm going to eat all these great, I want to eat all this, these vegetables and stuff, but they're so boring. I hate them because I can't put any dressing on them. And I think, well, where did you get that idea from? You certainly didn't get it from me. And 
here's the thing you need to understand. And this is what I love about my job because I'm an educator at heart, as you can tell by the fact that I go on and on and on about explaining things to you. I want you to understand what you're doing and why. You must, you must put dressing on your salads. And you must put oil in your dressing. I prefer that you're using an olive oil or an avocado oil, even a sesame oil, like a whole foods oil. I'm not a fan of the seed oils because they tend to be a little bit more inflammatory. Again, if that's all you got in your house, whatever, do what you need to do. Make better choices as your groceries allow. But you must put an oil because that's how you're actually going to be able to extract, absorb, and use the nutrients in the lettuce, right? Because we are going to eat salads. You're going to put lettuce and spinach, maybe some cucumber, tomatoes, peppers. I don't know what people put in their salads. Like pick something. You put it in there and you're going to make it all yummy. Put some um, oil on there, some vinegar on there. I like apple cider vinegar. Lemon juice is great. Um, balsamic, red wine. I'm not, I'm not fussy. Um, and that oil, first of all, it's going to make it taste delicious. You're going to put some salt in there, pink salt preferably. All your herbs are great, great because, again, micronutrients. But all of these nutrients, are dependent on specific pathways for absorption. So you're going to eat lettuce, and what do you want out of the, let the lettuce? You want to get out all of the minerals, right? You want to get the selenium, you want to get the zinc, you want to get all this great stuff out of the produce that you're putting into your body. And this is particularly important for the vegans and vegetarians because you have to work extra hard to make sure that you're getting all of your nutrients so that all of your nutrient buckets stay really, really full. And we need those oils for our body to absorb them. So please, definitely season all of your stuff, right? Rosemary, garlic, um, all of your herbs, all of your spices. You're going to put basil on there, all those great things that are coming in. Nettle is really great to put in. Parsley, um, any curry type stuff. Put in that flavor because you're getting a whole bunch of antioxidants, polyphenols, uh, micronutrients from all those things. And suddenly you're thinking, I have to have salad for lunch. Oh, wait a second. I'm having super salad and getting all this great stuff. So yeah, absolutely. Excellent question. Perfect. Thank you. All right. So we have elevated our morning. We have elevated our gut. And now you all want to know what you can do tonight. And you're all feeling a little bit nervous because, you know, we need to make some changes here, right? And, you know, how are we ever going to have any fun? Well, I'm here to tell you that no, I'm not promoting that you go out and drink a whole bunch of alcohol. However, I recognize that you're going to anyway. So again, how do we elevate that? This is not a space for judgment. This is a place to say, this is. Again, back to that definition of a holistic nutritionist. How does this fit into your life? Who are you in the context of wanting to be healthier, stronger, better, happier, smarter, whatever it is? And how does that fit into the life that you want to have, that you currently have? And how do we simply elevate that for you? So we're going to talk about two different things in this section. We're going to talk about how do we elevate your cocktail. And we're going to talk about how you do that, whether you drink alcohol or not, whether you have that choice in your life, and how do we make that better? And if you don't, how do we elevate the kinds of drinks that you already drink? And can we make that a little bit different? So if you are choosing pop, soda, uh, soft drinks, those kinds of things in your life, how do we elevate that experience? Again, we're not judging whether you should or shouldn't do it. You already know the answer to that. I want you to make a mindful decision. And the same thing goes for alcohol. I don't think anybody that's listening to this would stand up on a soapbox and say, I know that drinking Coke is good for my body. And I know that having a glass of wine is good for my body. We all know that these things come with risks. Okay, so we know that. Let's throw that out now and let's figure out how we're going to do this a little bit better. 
So if you are a pop drinker, you are going to drink a full sugar pop. Yes, Sean. Um, sorry, Jody, for interrupting yeah. your flow. So um, we're coming up just over an hour. So I just wanted to um, let everyone know that um, um, if you do need to go, I'm not sure that we position that the, the webinar would actually be done in an hour, but I know that sometimes people sort of have these blocks and they schedule accordingly. Um, so the first question, Jody, is how much longer do you think it will be in terms, if we didn't have any questions, to complete the presentation? Um, yeah, probably about 20 minutes. About yeah. 20 minutes. And yeah. then for those of you that need to leave, um, just bear in mind that we are recording this webinar. So <clears throat> if we have your contact information, we'll send you out a link. Um, if we don't have your contact information and you've come to us through other means, then make sure you send uh, an email to us. You can get the email information off our website to get a link for that or um, go to All Things Retirement on YouTube, our channel, and you'll find it there as well. Um, and for anyone that has to go, uh, we've, everyone's pretty much staying on this call. This is great information. But anyone that does have to leave at this point, Jody, uh, how do they get a hold of you? That is the very last slide. I have all my contact information on there. Okay. So my website's on there. My email's on there. Um, I'm on Facebook and on Instagram, Jody Lee Nutrition. Perfect. So those of you that are staying with us all the way through, which it looks like most of you, uh, that information will be there. And those that have to leave, if you do, then that information will be at the end of the video uh, recording as well. Okay. Sorry, Jody. There you go. No problem. Okay. So we're going to elevate our um, beverages of choice. So if you are a pop drinker, you like your Coke, you like your Diet Coke, that kind of thing, I'm going to suggest the, be the best way to elevate that is to make sure you're never drinking a diet drink. Again, that goes back to that aspartame conversation we already had with the sweetener. But again, I want to put things into your body that your body recognizes. Is refined sugar good for us? No, we know that. But it is something that our body is going to recognize. It is a food. It is a natural product that comes from nature. We've done lots of terrible things to it. It's not fabulous. It strips us of lots of nutrients. Of course, we already know that. But if you want to have this in your life, this is the way to do it. Get into that pure sugar position. This is something that your body is going to recognize. Your teeth are also going to tell you that it's a little bit more gritty and your body is potentially going to say, whoa, maybe we don't need four of these in a day and we only need one. Okay, cool, great. In between all of that, again, we want to make sure that we're hydrating. And our liver loves anything bitter or sour. So we are trying to not only elevate elements of our life, we are also wanting to support our body during this transition from winter to spring and really giving our liver all those kinds of building blocks and elements that we can put in there that it's gonna help our liver do what it already needs to do, right? So we are gonna to wanna to stay really hydrated and we're gonna do that with lots of lemon. Preferably a fresh lemon, but again, an organic lemon juice. You can add onto your click and collect the next time you're at store. If you've got some regular lemon juice in your life right now, it's still lemon. So throw that in there, away you go. If you've got a lime, if you've got a grapefruit, if you've got an orange, anything, throw it in there. It makes things a little bit more interesting for us. We're going to drink more as well. It helps flush all those other kinds of drinks out of our body as well. So we are going to flush out those soft drinks, that pop that we're drinking. It's going to help flush out that alcohol that we're drinking as well. One of the greatest ways to elevate a cocktail is I would honestly quite uh, prefer that you drank the alcohol and not the Coke. So if you have a rum and Coke, I'm less concerned about the rum than I am about the Coke. But people will say, well, I don't want to drink just rum. Fair enough. Absolutely. So at least put in that full sugar Coke. Or if you want to get all fancy, try putting in some different flavors of kombucha. Right? That It's that fermented black or green tea. It comes in lots of different flavors and it can, it is carbonated. So again, you're putting something in that's going to give you a little bit of that party in your mouth kind of experience, right? You got some bubbles, got a little bit of fizz going on. It comes in lots and lots of different uh, blends and it's, it makes a great mix. So now 
Have you elevated your cocktail? Sure, you can put something different in there, get a different kind of flavor going on. You're getting those B vitamins, you're getting some beta glucans, which is great for balancing your cholesterol levels. You're getting some probiotics. Now, of course, keep in mind that alcohol kills um, any sort of bacteria or virus or germ, which is why we're sterilizing the world with it right now. So putting probiotic rich things into our drink, yeah, we're going to kill off a little bit of that, but you're still going to get a little bit better than something that you got if you hadn't been doing that. So why does this work? We all want to be part of something special, right? We all want to feel fancy. This is a difficult time in our lives right now dealing with all of this COVID stuff. So pull out the fancy glasses, have some bubbly things in your glass. You could put some sparkling water <clears throat> in with your, <clears throat> pardon me, in with your um, alcohol. You're getting a little bit of that gut nurturing. The, the probiotics will give you a little bit of liver protection. Not a lot, but a little. You're going to get a little bit of that energy boost. It's going to kill those sugar cravings in the afternoon, and it's a great pick-me-up. <clears throat> so it does give you a little bit of extra. We know we're going to do it anyway. How can we do it a little bit better? So how do we put this all together in this transition and throw off those winter flaws for us? What I hope you've gotten through all of this experience, <clears throat> I'm losing my voice at this point, is this isn't about de deprivation. It isn't about not doing things and giving up all the things that we loved. It's about being a little bit more mindful about what we are doing and making a thoughtful choice. So one of the ways to do that is to decide before you start. Okay, it's Tuesday night, and I'm all excited about these fancy kombucha cocktails. Okay, are you going to go home and do it or not? <coughs> are you going to have dessert tonight or not? If you're going to, that's great. But don't wake up tomorrow morning with a headache and wonder why. You know why. So be mindful. We have the opportunity to lean into the depression and the anxiety of this unknown. We also have the opportunity to lean into making the best out of what we've got. You have fancy dishes at home, use them. Put your boring bologna sandwich on your best china. Cut it into triangles, use a cloth napkin. Pour your sparkling water into your most beautiful champagne flute with a slice of orange. This kind of thing helps you transition your mindset <coughs> into this, these new, um, this new season. And it also gives us a little bit of kindness. We have some opportunity, and we've a little bit been forced into this. One of my biggest things for people is you have to plan what you're eating. Otherwise, you eat reactively. Well, we're kind of all forced to do this now because you can't just willy-nilly go to the grocery store if you forgot something or if you have a, a craving for something tonight. We kind of have to plan. And that can be really helpful to us to do a little bit of meal planning, plan your shopping, plan what you're cooking, make a big batch of something. You don't have to be cooking every day. Make a big batch of soup, make a big batch of chili. Throw in some extra veggies, extra water, definitely that extra water in there. Now, this one might sound weird to hear from a nutritionist, but we do need to focus on extra sleep. Our bodies do a lot of repair when we're sleeping. <clears throat> we do a lot of cleaning, absorbing. Our brains do lots of work. <coughs> Pardon me. 
we want to have a little bit of movement and we definitely want to be kind to ourselves during all of this. And when we kind of put all of these pieces together, ourselves become a lot happier. And when we have happier cells and our cells are absorbing all this wonderful stuff, your brains have an opportunity to be happier as well. But you can't have any of that if you don't have that foundation of nutrients first. So we want to get through this particular spring the best that we can. We have a lot of concerns, a lot of anxiety, a lot of worry. We're all feeling very scared. And the way for us to have some resilience to that and to be able to use our mental capacities to the best of our ability is if we have a foundation of good nutrients. If we have all of those nutrient buckets that our bodies require and we have them as full as possible. So really trying to focus on how do you elevate those nutrients? How do you add in a little bit here, a little bit there so that your cells can work for you and then your brain can work for you too. And that's gonna give you a little bit more robust ability to face this situation that we're all in. Fortunately, most of us have a little extra opportunity to sleep. Those of you with people in your house under the age of 12, you probably don't, but the rest of us might have a little opportunity for some extra sleep. And that gives your brain a chance to also detox and cleanse itself the same way that your liver does. And again, that's going to give you a brighter, fresher morning, give you that opportunity to have spring transition and throw off those blahs and come into this next season a little bit fresher. And I want you to consider that, yeah, I give it, I've given you a lot of information and lots of options to try. You have lots of great strategies and you might be feeling really excited to go and try it all. And I want to caution you that I want you to remain gentle. This is not the year to do something major. This is not the year to do a big overhaul. This is the year to be kind and to be gentle with what we're doing so that we can have that elevation, so that we can have this great experience, so that we can put one step in front of the next and we can get hopefully to that spring weather where we can stick our hands into the dirt and, and get out there and enjoy some of this lovely weather that we know is coming. So let's see what other kinds of questions we have for us now, Sean. You're on mute. Thank you. Thank you, you're my, my, my mute coach. Okay, so um, <clears throat> a bit more on the macro side, uh, but are there also ways to boost your day on a really gray day? Small little strategies. Um, any comments there? Yes. Anything citrus, lemon, orange, lime, any of that kind of citrus smell will help you. So if you have any essential oils in your house, they would be great to diffuse on a gray, gloomy day like this. Um, lots of water is going to help. Um, light, refreshing kinds of things. So if you have frozen fruit, a smoothie is often helpful. And you know what? Getting out for a walk in the rain is actually quite uplifting because you're still moving, you're, you're breathing in some really fresh, clean air. It smells amazing. Little things like that can help. Um. How do we get Jody's recipes? I think you're going to talk about that in a minute. Yes. Um, and then what about uh, water? How much water should we drink? So you talked about that, but again, the rule of thumb is yeah. take, what's, what's the calculation? Your weight in pounds and drink half in ounces. So if you're a hundred pounds, aim for 50 ounces. But, at, but that's all fluids in a day, right? So drink some water. If you have some soup, if you had a smoothie, if you ate a watermelon, right? Cucumber, okay. that kind of thing. Yeah. Perfect. Uh, what about some gut health supplements you see on the internet or on health food stores? I think you've got some pretty strong feelings about the quality of supplements and that kind of thing. Yes, I do have some fairly strong feelings about that. I would really caution 
using any sort of um, <clears throat> grocery store level supplement. You want to be really careful with what you're doing. I'm also cautious of using supplements instead of making true change in how you're eating and how you're treating your gut because throwing in a, a, a digestive enzyme on top of your Big Mac is not going to help your gut health. Mm -hmm. We really do need to look at the kinds of foods that we're putting in, the quality of the foods that we're putting in. If you have already done that, and you're now thinking, how, how else do I elevate that? You can look at <clears throat> um, probiotics are really important. Um, digestive enzymes might be. I don't like them willy-nilly for everybody. Not everybody needs them. I, I prefer to use a food solution first or an herbal solution first. And I prefer using an herb in a, in a whole herb form rather than in a capsule. If you happen to be a person that knows what they're doing and are just wanting a true recommendation of which one do I like, I have an online dispensary that only uses practitioner grade supplements. So they are all vetted by a whole panel of naturopaths and other holistic practitioners to see if they're really high quality. And I can post that link for you as well. It's, it's free to join and you can shop through the whole catalog and, and see if there's something in there. And I would feel comfortable that I know the quality of those are good, but I still caution taking too many supplements without having the support of a practitioner because they can cause as many problems as taking pharmaceuticals if you don't know how or why mm -hmm. you're taking them and creating other issues. And we don't want to do that. We'll do one last question and then we can close things out. Will coconut oil used as a base with essential oils be okay for the coconut oil in coffee? Does it cause any issues? I don't understand the essential oil part. So the coconut oil that you would use when you're using your, like the fractionated stuff that you use to, to blend with your essential oils? Yeah, maybe they're talking about just the, uh, the natural oils of the, of the coffee itself. Uh, the the natural you know ingredients that are beneficial from coffee. I guess the question is is that, and obviously you don't think it interacts negatively because you're recommending that people do that. Okay, see if they can can clarify that. Um, so coconut oil in coffee, you can use any coconut oil that is. You can use a solid coconut oil, or you can use a liquid coconut oil. That's totally fine, um, and that's what I would put in my coffee. And, and the, the and addition to that was fractured coconut oil. Do you know what that means? Yes. Fractionated coconut oil is perfectly fine to consume. Okay. It just means liquid coconut oil. Okay. Perfect. And people who use essential oils will use fractionated coconut oil as the um, carrier oil to dilute their essential oils, which is also important. Okay. Great. Thank you. Yeah. Those are the questions. All right, so this, this is what we're going to do this year. We are going to be gentle. We are going to work with how our bodies work and work with our season, work with the organs that we know are wanting to help us out right now. Um, and by all means, get in touch with me in these different locations. Um, my website you can email me. I spend far, far too much time on Facebook and uh, some time on Instagram. So you can connect with me in those places. If, um, if you're in the US, um, I don't have access for you for the online dispensary. But if you are in Canada, you can definitely access my online dispensary anywhere in Canada that you are. Um, if that's something that's of interest to you, and you want to try that too. Okay, Jody, thank you. Thank you so much for, uh, for this presentation today. It was awesome. Lots of great content. Um, we probably could spend a, at least a half day unpacking each of these areas. So thank you very much. You're welcome. Um, Thanks for having me. Pleasure. And of course, you've got Jody's contact information. Don't hesitate to reach out to her. Like I said, we're recording this uh, webinar, so we'll post it on our YouTube channel for your review. Just a few closing comments. Um, again, if you haven't visited the YouTube channel, it's all things retirement. Uh, we've got the Facebook page, uh, Humphreys Wealth Group. And of course, um, uh, go there. There's regular posts and content and links. And our main component of communication, which is HumphreysWealthGroup.com. That's our webpage. And our blog section 
is being populated with content on a regular basis. So make sure you go there. And again, if you're not on our distribution list, if you want to be alerted to the various posts on the different platforms that we're doing on a regular basis, reach out to us, reach out to our office. And uh, again, you can get the content information at uh, humphreyswealthgroup.com there. You can just send us a quick email as well.